Hello, everyone. So my name is Johan Brand. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, as you would uh, call it. I've started several companies. And uh, I want to share something I believe is an extremely important part of entrepreneurship, which is value-based entrepreneurship. The values that drive you to actually create companies that make meaning. Companies that actually grow without you having to do all the jobs. Companies that actually grow on the back of society. So I entitled this uh, job, uh, this presentation, You Don't Have to Own the Ocean to Sail It. And I literally have made that into a hobby of mine. I've taken a sailboat. I call it a minimal viable boat. I made it fully electric. It's a zero emission sailboat. It's a meeting place for entrepreneurs, politicians, scientists uh, who want to actually explore and learn about entrepreneurship, but also about the ocean. And uh, the funny thing about sailing is about working with the elements, just like entrepreneurship. It's all about not going against the current, but with the current. You can go against the current in terms of what's mainstream, but you have to go with the big wave. You have to ride it. And I have this uh, quote, which I love to quote yourself. It's something you do when you get to a certain stage in life. You need a bit of, uh, you need a bit of uh, confidence building. So you can't change to win, but you can learn to sail. But the point of this one, which I teach people in entrepreneurship, I teach my, my team, I was taught it myself, is that there's certain things in life you work with. And the wind is one of them. And when I built the most successful company I've been part of so far called Kahoot, which I'll talk to you about, we also saw some, something else, is that when you sail, you sail on the ocean. And lucky for all of us, nobody owns the ocean. So it's one of those things you don't have to own, to utilize, to enjoy, to build a business on. And the internet is very much the same. So on the back of this saying that you don't have to own the ocean to sail it, you can build a whole ethos around how to build a business. And if you think about the modern companies, the companies which are now coming, not the apples of the world, but the companies post-Apple, the companies who don't make hardware, but the companies who are c completely in the cloud, they don't own the infrastructure that they build their uh, venture on. They, they hardly own their employees. But they built everything on the open, free internet, very much with analogy of the ocean. And if you're a young student now, this might be completely natural for you. But if you're in a big, big business, you'll be surprised. They think you have to own everything. Apple went all the way that they actually started to own the machinery within, inside the company, manufacturing their phones. Great strategy for them, but it means everyone else afterwards have to change their strategy. So keep in mind this idea that everything is free and open, and you can use it the best way you want. We asked ourselves the question, OK, so if information is free, if you basically can build businesses for the free and open world on the back of the internet, what is the role of education? What's the role of education in that? It obviously isn't what it used to be, which is about getting information and then some kind of specialistic way to, to perform. So basically, until the Industrial Revolution, education was for the whole mind, for the whole body, for the whole heart. Then Industrial Revolution comes along, and we start specializing. You start getting education for specific tasks that we have to perform in society as production becomes specific. That education system we still have, yet we have a world where you basically need lots of skill sets, and you need to know how to navigate. So you basically are going from a world with a clear goal, the A to B, the business process, the predictive process. We are leaving that behind, and we're going into a world with fussy goals. Not unlike what you do with sailing, where you have to tack with the wind to get to where you want to get to. Sometimes you have to do a de detour. The role of education, the role of the modern worker is much the same. You have to navigate a fussy landscape. We don't really know what success looks like. But you have this feeling inside that I know what it is when I find it, just like an explorer. This is the role of education. Honestly, this is actually the role of businesses, is to embrace fussiness, to learn how to be creative, 
not necessarily creative in the arts type of thing, but being creative in the way you go about doing business. And we all get told, be yourself. Be the best version of yourself. I mean, the Americans love this, right? Be yourself. It's okay. Just be yourself. Be that guy on the tube, right? And that's okay. But it's gone a little bit too far in our society, where everything is about the individual, where everything is about you and your attitude to the world. It's like you forgot that actually when you enter the world and you're going to start working, you're going to start working for a company. Company. You're going to start working with other people. And if we educate a world where everything is about you and your individual results, your piece of results, everything about my grade, how well am I doing, and you're not looking at the guy next to you realizing, shit, I'm going to work with her, and what if she gets better grades? Maybe I'll do better. And this idea of actually being a company needs to be part of our educational system. That's fussy. That's not a clear education path where it's about me, 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 me. It's always about who's around me, what's the subject, what's going on, and you have to navigate this, this space. This is the same for startups. This is the same, the challenges that the big corporates face. That's why they fail often when they have to tackle new fields which is uncertain. Our solution was super simple. Gets the kids to dance. So that literally is a, a user uh, experiencing our product. Now, why is that user dancing in a classroom? It's because we tapped into something that we all have, something that's free and comes with you at birth. You do not have to pay to obtain it. It's called play. And you share it with the animal kingdom, and you share it almost with anything in nature. So we built a product on the one thing we all have from birth we don't have to learn, play. And we realized that we've taken this immense expense to build buildings, equip children with technology, pay teachers, train staff, ship them all into one room, and then you sit there individually and you focus on me, 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 and my grade. That's not a good idea. So we thought, well, whole society has paid for all of this. What can we do to make learning awesome and extract value and give value back? Let's get people back to the original thing, the fire moment. You know, when you're sitting around a fireplace telling stories to each other, when you're being seen by the others in the room, when you're having an emotional connection with other people. That's where we created something called Kahoot, which is a game-based learning platform. It really is a homage to the old good old game shows, to Buzz for PlayStation, for the quiz, for multiple choice. We put it into context where what we added was the social element where everyone is interactive. And then it looks like then this. That's how it's when you're playing with Kahoot. That's how it's when you go to school. I think you agree that's a bit more fun. Of course, you can't do that all the time. But this is what was lacking. It sounds insane, but when we looked at the world, what's the role of education? Is to allow kids and adults to understand that play, having fun, being expressive, is actually one of the most vital components that's missing. Why are we having stress? Why are we having exam failure? It's because we're not dealing with it as a challenge that I can overcome. It's becoming a mountain that you cannot survive. When you have classrooms, which are like these auditoriums, you're sitting there, and you know you've been there yourself. You know that after half an hour, you're bored, right? Boom, Kahoot comes into the place, you're having fun, you're laughing. Really what you're doing is, this is a chance to have a bit of a flirt with a guy or girl next to you, right? But a funny thing, through social interaction, you learn. By having those moments with someone else, which could be around something very serious, science shows you learn. I know it sounds crazy that we figured out this and we weren't the only ones. But there was this idea to look at what's going on in the classroom, what's present. And what was present wasn't just technology and teachers and so on. It was this natural playing human beings. Where our first prototype, this is literally from Eastbourne in England, where our first prototype was put into place. Where the natural reaction of one of the students was to stand on the desks. He felt this game, this moment in time, I'm going to stand on a desk. Normally, you get shouted down, don't do that. The teacher, you look at her, she's smiling. Because that kid never, ever took part in education before that. It was always a troubled one. And the rest of the class thought, 
Oh, that's pretty cool. He's taking part. Again, if you look at the front of the screen, you'll see that um, that's data. That's performance data displayed for the classroom, for the teachers. Because another part which I think is interesting when we're developing all these super advanced blockchain enabled AI, blah, 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 blah. The most intelligent thing in the room is in here. When that person gets that data on the big screen with everyone in the room, you have emotional data, you have the real data, and you can make quick assessments. You don't need some fancy adaptive robot at that stage. You really just need to give the teacher the chance to make that decision because you can see each other. And this is the thing that's super interesting. As we saw in the world that we're going into, that everyone has to become creators. But you can't just create without purpose. So if you look at the free open internet, there's a lot of <clears throat> BS, right? It's a lot of things being created. And you can excuse that because in the beginning, you're creating to actually learn how to create, which is really how you go through a, 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 lot, a lot of school. But over time, you have to create for a purpose. And one of the big skills for 20, 21st century, and you'll see it here, is you have to create value for others. So if you're going to be a good entrepreneur, if you're going to be a good student, if you're going to be a good teacher, you have to create things that others can put into the system and learn from. So in Kahoot, the real learning is to get the students motivated to create games for others, make challenges so others learn. The teacher will then look at you going, you really know your subject because you just created a game that taught that student over there whatever we had to learn. And that's really when you become a leader and you get respected in your crowd, just like how we loved Steve Jobs or Jeff Bezos or whatever. You know, we respect those who create that enable our lives. And that starts at school. And we need to learn this behavior at school that really creating value for others is how I am going to become a valuable uh, part of society. And I think it's funny that we have a society where really education is about repetition, blurting back what you had just retained instead of actually challenging the teacher saying, I think I can do better than that. And then you get shut down. So it's not just for young kids. This is 3,000 people above 50 years learning about the internet, playing one massive game of Kahoot, just like bingo, right? And the cool thing there is teamed up with young staff of a telecom company who's organizing this. So they're really having a moment of all the staff in that business matched up with 3,000 seniors. And they're playing a game of Kahoot. And the content is historic moments of the city that they grew up. So you are taking back the heritage. And, you have, and they are the experts. The young people are not. And the young people are experts on the internet. And through the interaction for each other, the old elderly are, are learning about the internet and having a, a meaningful social interaction, and young people are probably learning about their city. That's kind of how it works, and that's what we learned. That if you want to build something in our world, you're going to have to look at a behavioral model. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, they're all made by people who know psychology, how to make us addicted. The triggers that make us do things again and again, and the level where you know you now check your phone without having have a notification. I've turned off notification on my phone. I still pick it up and check and see what's going on. That's when I have a behavior that's become intrinsic. That's how they own your life. That's why the advertising works. Then we thought, well, let's do that for better and put a learning model on top of that, which is how we learn. And then we put uh, in the one that really is the most powerful in our society, the gaming model. When you take play, free open play, and put it into a structured format, you basically say, this is a playground. Here's the point. This is the rules. You accept it, let's go. Not unlike the classroom, except in the classroom, the game isn't any fun. It's like you're going to fail. Because, you know, everything below A isn't fine. So the idea here was to create a Kahoot model where you basically make games into something fun. And, and I think what you should do now is uh, you now listen to me. You've been a learner. You should then go be a player. Afterwards, research, create, teach something someone, become an expert. That was a bit of uh, advertising for Kahoot. Now, this is not module bullshit. This works. So I can show you a graph here with awesome numbers saying that we're on 70 million active users every month. We are uh, on our way to 100 million users doing this. Remember, these are people learning in classroom. Basically, those 70 million are like this, solving equations. I don't know about you, but I don't normally are that anticipating when I'm going to solve an equation. They're committed to the answer. 
That's fun. And that's when you figure out that you won with someone, right? I mean, the real thing here is not they got it right. It's the shared moment they have together. And with that, we've been able to do over 40% of the US market through a free technology built on a free open internet available freely for the teachers. Open standards, uh, and open business infrastructure. What's interesting, I come from Norway, I come from the Nordics. CSS that you're using, invented there. MySQL, basically the free open internet, Linux, it was invented in the Nordics. And we gave it away, and the smart Americans and Asians, you came along and you made a fortune on top of it. Yeah, I still think we're better off. But maybe next time we should uh, make some companies on top of that, like Spotify, I guess. So the last thing I want to leave you guys with is, is this. When you make a business, when you look at yourself, you see a gaming for health, you see all these kind of self-help courses and so on. It's not really what it's all about. It's about the mind, the hand, and, and, and the heart. This is actually a pedagogy developed in the 1700s before the Industrial Revolution, where we saw we have to educate the whole human being. We have to educate for the mind, we have to educate for the hand, but most of all, we have to educate for the heart. If you look at governments and how they buy solutions, the bottom part was cut out. It was removed. So that's why we don't have solutions which are emotionally driven. That's why I, I don't kid you. If you look at the per procurement orders from, com from, from large corporates and from from governments, I get shocked. There's nothing about the emotional part of what we're doing. We have to bring that back in. We did that with Kahoot, and we see it more and more with the companies we love. Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. Don't fool you, but they are here to make advertising, but they're doing it by designing for your heart. They're designing for your, can I call it, um, your, your um, not just your reflection of yourself to look better, but actually your desire to be recognized. Because everything is an opportunity. So you don't have to own, own the ocean to sail it. You know this if you're an entrepreneur. You go out and you see an opportunity in everything, right? You see, everything you see is an opportunity. You get so excited about everything that you don't get anything done, right? So you have to navigate the fussiness. You have to start focusing. But focusing is not just doing one thing like this. It's really figuring out what's important. And when it's really fussy, it's only through the heart you'll figure out what's right. So that's the thing about the ocean. It's in here, it's in our body. We know it, we have it. We just have to follow our heart and our emotions and every opportunity is possible. Thank you.